for these cars, so it'll be really on for the first turn. So as they line up for the big reverse grid race, race three in the Fujitsu 200, it's the former mini champion Eddie Bell leading them off in the V8s alongside him, Christchurch racer Adam Brook and Stewart and Porter. Starting in position five is Andrew Fawcett, Chris Adams from Dunedin out of grid seven and McLaren out of eight. Next up it's Pedersen, Petty, Edgel and Hardy, ex-champion there alongside some improving races. Simon Richard starts out of 13, Nick Ross out of 15 and Henderson 16. Further back down the field, McLean, Wallace, Lambert and the GT Radio Ford Falcon at Dean Perkins. Some of the big boys now, Manuel, Radish at Scott and Fogg, 21 to 24. This is the business end of the track, Bernard, Yule and Proctor and Booth, guys that really want to make the most of trying to get through the field in the wet. And rounding out the field of 29 is John McIntyre. So, race three, the big wet. <laughs> and it's Eddie Bell in the Bartercard Holden alongside him. It's the versatile buildings BA of Adam Brook as we take a look down the track. 22 laps to finish the Fujitsu 200. What a challenging way to finish the big slide because in the wet conditions here at Pukekohe, this is what race three is going to be. 22 laps of Hal Browning is what it is. As they head into Jenny for the first time. Oh, and Pedersen! The boot's gone. Already drama in the first corner, final race. Man, what an unfortunate weekend for the former champion, Mark Pedersen and the United Ford Falcon, United Video, and look at that, it's just hanging on the old boot there. Oh, it's just hanging on by some wire, but look, but uh, that's unfortunate, but uh, you remember back about six months ago, Mark got caught up in a similar incident where he got a convertible. Now, this is horrendous. How can you see where you're going? Tail lights in front. Look for the tail lights, and that's about your only way that you can uh, find a hole find somewhere to go as long as they're not off track too there's uh, Porter rounds up Dave Stewart in the Eltham car oh bit of jostling going on further back down the field yes it's Eddie Bell that former mini man and he's uh, leading the V8s first lap he's gonna make that big step up slides it keeps it on the track on board with the versatile buildings BA of Adam Brook in second place well, Adams uh, towards the pointy end of the field, obviously, after his race one disappointment of a battery cable breaking. Big problems down here for Mark Peterson. Obviously, that uh, first corner hit. Looks like they've got to bang that uh, rear guard out. And, um, well, the bootlet's completely gone. So, uh, looks like they're going to run this car without a bootlet. You can see the cables there for the uh, onboard camera that he had in the boot. But it looks like they're going to get it back out on the racetrack, minus the rear boot and the rear wing. Could be a handful in these conditions with it, without that. Roger Davis with the latest in the pits. Meanwhile, out on the track, and it's two other guys have really made... They're booting it in the wet. That's the Eltham car of uh, Dave Stewart. He's raced into the lead, rightly, hotly followed oh, by... Ben Porter in action with Williams. It was Adam Brook, we were trying to say, has also moved up into second heavy bell, but it's the former truck racer. What a weekend for the triple one car of Andrew Porter. This is on board the Havilland number three. Bit of action in the front there. I think that's Hayden McKenzie on the right. And we can't see who the white car is. But look <laughs> at them, they're still going. And here comes Fogg down the inside. Takes the boy from Coatesville, Hayden McKenzie down the inside. They've had a bit of drama. This week they dropped a diff in, uh, in the qualifying session, had a sponsor all set up and then that fell through just a week out from the start of the race. So a big weekend for that Hayden McKenzie and the Castrol Albany Toyota Ford Falcon. That was Nick Ross just jumped up the inside of one of the Havilland cars. As we go back towards the front of the pack, Hedison there on the left. He's got troubles. Well, he's trying to stay out of the road too. And also he lost all his downforce with no boots, so... Tim Edgel in the Chester's car moving down the inside of Eddie Bell. Good driving so far by all the drivers in this very tricky conditions. The GT radial Ford Falcon of Dean Perkins trying to move his way up through the field. And then goes someone having a look up the inside. A lot of caution needed, and I just hope you didn't put the commentator's curse on the on the guys out there, Brownie, because uh, this is terrible terrible conditions to drive one of these cars and when you think about it it's fantastic performance so far by all the drivers because it's very very wet very slippery sliding around on these big cars and here comes the big stars it's McIntyre down the inside booth around the outside brave move 
Well, he's hanging in there. And oh no, that's Nick Ross going around and taking Booth with him. Probably got the shock of his life to see Andrew Booth in that firepower Commodore. What are you doing outside there? Well, you couldn't pick a worse time to try and go around the outside of someone when that happens. And McIntyre got through. And uh, look at the vision there is, Mark. <laughs> you can't see, where you, as, as you say, you've got to go by the lights. Well, that's because his wiper's working every now and then. That's his problem. Amazing shots here, the NZ Truth V8s. Let's go down to the pits and catch up with Roger Davis. Mark, what's the problem? Yeah, look, Roger, unfortunately, at the start, when it got spun around and around, uh, the whole rear end of the car's come detached, to me, when I mean, say, the rear spoiler. Um, without the rear wing, there's just an aerodynamic head, um, aids. And I was doing 100 mile down on the straight, and the thing's trying to swap ends without any rear wing on it. Uh, we tried to circulate, but, you know, I'm going down the straight as slow as I can to stay out of everybody's way. But when you've got 30 cars bowing down on you, um, sooner or later, someone's going to drive in the back of us. So I made the call myself. I just don't think it's worth continuing. Uh, we're out of the points anyway. We can circulate, but it, it, there's no real points. So um, I think on the side of caution here, it's, uh, it's certainly worth pulling out. Disappointment there for Mark Pedersen. Interesting that uh, Mr. Movember, Andy Booth reckons he's got the basic same dry setup for the wet. And everything seems to be on target at the moment. Well, some cars uh, react differently to, uh, to the wet weather. And so do the drivers. So in some instances, Clint, it's actually uh, more of a mind game than, uh, than a car setup. But sometimes a, a car change can help things. But it's, uh, it's a team job, really. As uh, we look at the back of the heavily number three, I think it is, of uh, Fog. Eddie Bell now being attacked down the inside by the rest of the top drivers trying to keep the way through the field like the Oryx Commodore and Paul Manuel. And notice uh, Manuel, no, no windows in the front of that Commodore help with uh, the windows not misting up. This on board the Team Strawberry car of Andy Fawcett. Perkins, the wild man, as he puts a slide over the hill. And whips down the inside. <laughs> Bernard gets the draft. On board with Dean Perkins in the wild, wild wet here at Pukekohe. Boy, he did that beautifully. And uh, Bernard following through as well as they close in on the Chester's car of Timmy Edgel. Challenging conditions here in the NZ Truth V8s, the grand finale showdown for the Fujitsu 200 race three. Oh, on board. Booth, look at that. Someone else off the other side, and this is on board Fog looking back on Connor McLaren. And uh, McLaren caught one in the back from, from Booth as well, so uh, some desperate measures uh, needing to happen here. The problem here is that uh, you, uh, you see someone ahead of you and you've just got to stay intact. This is Kevin Williams. Uh, Looks like he's about to be lapped by the front guys. Understand he's been through the pit lane having problems with vision. Well, he ain't the only one at the moment because <laughs> it's just a whole track of sea spray at the moment. Here come some of the big guns trying to make their charge up through the field. Now listen, I just noticed Radisic's wipe is not working either, Clint. And the HPM 777 ah, so Falcon. He, it's, it's not! Oh, that's going to be a disaster for Paul Radisic. And Booth goes wide, Radisic goes wide as well, so uh, some uh, maybe these uh, little issues. And i tell you another thing that these cars do very easily in this sort of weather is they fog up. Look at Radisic, look how far off the line he's got problems. Yeah, well, they had a misfire at the start of the weekend, and now he looks to be missing a windscreen wiper, which would just be hopeless in these conditions. Johnny McIntyre looking on board, the BP Ultimate Ford looking right up the boot. Gets past Radishitz there on the left-hand side. Getting the draft behind Andy Booth. Well, welcome to... Oh, and who's that? That's Darren Henderson in the Samsung Radio Sport car. Someone else was off the air, so I don't know whether he got some help, but... Uh... All got into the mud on one side of the track and just slid right across the other side. On board. Oh, no, he did it himself trying to avoid the other cars. Big oh. hit. There it is, that's just how difficult it is out here in the big wet, and here comes Radisic without the wiper. Here's Roger, what's the latest? The problem we've got down here with Paul Radisic, the wipers are not working on the car, so visibility you can't see. In fact, you can see there, I think the wipers have completely gone. Um, so, not being able to see in these conditions, like we are talking to Mark Peterson earlier, it's uh, pretty dangerous, so obviously going to try and do something with the car. But no wipers, it'll be marginal around here. On board the versatile buildings, BA, this is the battle for the lead, and it's Adam Brook from Christchurch. He's gone to the front. 
Fantastic drive in the wet, Drakey. His aim is to get a podium place or a win this season, and uh, man, he's given himself a chance here. Well, the Altham car got way loose coming over the top of the Ford Mountain, and uh, as we were talking to Roger in the pits, you saw that Dave Bernard went off the circuit at the hairpin. So, and here's, here's Bernard now, so maybe what's happening with him? Has he got vision problems as well? More dramas for car 48. Brook, this is the leader looking back on Dave Stewart down the kink of the back straight. Look at the amount of spray coming off those tyres. Whoa! Oh, Porter, he's misjudged the hairpin. No brakes. Well, just no grip in the wet. He's still going, but uh, he turns uh, Stewart around. I don't think the, that was that was second position. I don't think the uh, stewards are going to look too kindly at that one. So Andrew Porter out of trucks into more drama here in race three in the triple one high drilling Hyundai construction car booth. This is on, on board looking back from Andy Fawcett's car as uh, Boothy starts getting all over him. And uh, see, there's quite a bit on him. There's McIntyre just behind him. Just sliding it nicely. Absolute <laughs> sleek conditions as we go on board with McIntyre and the BP Ultimate Ford trying to get down the inside of Booth. Amazing driving, Drakey, in these conditions. Yeah, you can see what I mean. That It's good that you can actually use someone else's lights. But in this, uh, Stuart. Stuart now, that looks as though it's the top of the hill again, heading up the hill where he had that off previous lap, and we've got a safety car. Certainly not the place you want to be parked in the wet here in Pukekohe or even in the dry. He's not the only one with drama, though. Brooks out in front. Let's go down to the pits. Dave, uh, looks like you've got problems here. Yeah, I just can't see. Um, it got worse and worse and worse. I was holding my hand out the window to try and get air in, so I did try and demist it, but we haven't got a heated screen in the thing, and no point going on. I can't, can't see. As you can see, I was going really well. And then got down the end of the straight, I couldn't see a thing. I've been off once already, and I'm just going to get cleaned up. So I'm here talking to you. I'm not going to drive, I can't see. Great, we'll see you at the next round. Yep, top. you got to love that Bernard sense of humour, that's for sure. And while the GE Money Safety Car's out on the track, let's relive some of the big moments in race three. The Fujitsu 200. Porter gives the big spin around for Stewart. More driver down the back straight on the Samsung Radio Sport Commodore of Darren Henderson, a wild ride in the wet. Drama up and over the hill with Fogg trying to sneak down the inside of Hayden McKenzie. Which he does. Not much room to spare with that arm code just outside your mirror. Sliding the big V8 into the sweeper. Now the big stars making their big push and getting a push. And this is Booth going around the outside of, of uh, Nick Ross, and Ross losing it at just the wrong time, or maybe the right time. This is on board Andrew Fawcett, and this is the wild man Perkins and Bernard as they shoot past over Ford Mountain. Yes, when he could see David Bernard. We'll take a short break. Stay with us. Oh, the big slide continues in the Fujitsu 200. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Wet, race three, the 22 lapper, the big splasher. This is Brook, your race leader, the GE Money Porsche safety car is off the track, all set for the restart. What's going to happen in the second half of this race, Drakey? Well, the, both Brook and McLean, a good start. Sort of the slower guys towards the front of the pack fall asleep on this restart situation. Look at them, they've got a good uh, second up their sleeve already. And that's McLean in the Texon site, Falcon there right behind Brook as the field funnels through the S's onto the back straight. Easy on the throttle, this part of the track and the booth he gets a little slide on. This is on board Angus Fogg and the... Scary. Heavily number three, yeah, isn't that terrible? It's complete white out there, the back straight. Unbelievable shots on board. Oh, he's gone off! Whoa! He's off! Oh, oh that's, that's manual in the Oryx Commodore. What's going on there? Halfway down the back straight and that's the problem, the guys can't see. Someone must have got onto the kink, got a bit of mud on the the grass and yep. sliding around. Well, that's the giveaway, the noise of dirt in the uh, coming up in the mud guards and under the floor. And you wouldn't see that kink too because you couldn't see where you're going as you saw on board with Foggy. Sometimes you have to look up on the back straight there at Puko, you have to look at the signage to find where the track goes because you don't see that kink at times. And you couldn't even see the tail lights. This is Manuel trying to get on board the freight train that is the defending champion, oh. McIntyre, just keeps it on the track. 
Well, conditions getting worse here, Clint, and uh, I just noted that Andrew Porter a couple laps ago done the fastest lap of the race, probably just before he uh, he took Stewart off at the hairpin. The conditions getting worse, though, as you can see from looking back on board the BP Ultimate Ford Falcon of the the man who's won the first two races today. He's trying to go for that podium place in race three. Remember, they get 75 points for the win, 67 for second, 60 for third. So if the top drivers can get a podium place in each race, 200 points for the weekend, and that's the big, the big goal. Nice goal. Look at that. Oh, forget about the Fujitsu 200. This is like the bathtub 200. We'll have to excuse everyone if there's some pauses in our commentary because we can't see the cars out there. And the drivers can't see where they're going. You're looking back on board from the GT Radial Ford Falcon of Dean Perkins. And let's see which one of these two boys does the big slide over the hill this time. Perkins is good at it. And Foggy can have a go too when he wants to. As he backs out of it there to try and get a good run coming over here. Try and tuck the car up inside. Oh, he goes sideways. Look who's looming in the background. McIntyre. Looks like a shark, doesn't he? The big green monster's coming up. <laughs> he loves to have the patience power game. Doesn't go right out with the plan to uh, try and upset everyone as we take a look at the hydraulic best under pressure moments. This is on board Angus Fogg, and we don't know what's going oh, on here. Oh, there it is. I'd imagine that him and uh, Paul will get together after the race and find out exactly what happened. Couldn't see each other. For the dirt, the mud, slipping off onto the windscreen. If Foggy gets wide. There you go, McIntyre, picking them off one by one. Booth, he might have a go here too. And he's also got in front of Andy Booth. So a big move by McIntyre. Look, this is just so critical of how you squeeze that throttle down. Your eyes have got to see where you can do it, and then you just squeeze it down ever so slightly. Whoa! Oh, nightmare under the brakes. Great control by these drivers. That's Cam Hardy there. So up the inside of him, push it, goes wide too. In fact, off the track. Oh, look at that, puts the gas on. Right around in front of a couple of other boys. Well, he had the big fireball here at the start of the year. Now he's got the big wet, so last lap. So it's Brooke out in front. McLean second, Perkins third, as it's uh, Johnny McIntyre coming down to try and take over that top podium position, the third place. We certainly want that. A podium would be just perfect to finish this weekend off. Perkins has just got to try and lay off that gas pedal. I tell you what, McIntyre's been just laying on it all throughout the weekend. Superb in the wet today. He's got a good run here, Clint. Very good run. He getting to the inside. Perkins covers. This is a good position to be in. Hey, and the other thing is he can see him, so yes. he knows where he is. Huge difference. <laughs> Shame about the corner or the straight up ahead. You don't mind putting the foot down if you can see where you're going with the wets here at Pukekohe, Fujitsu 200. This is the battle for fourth and third. Perkins has held it together well. So it's Adam Brook. He said his goal was to try and make a podium place or get a race win, and he's going to do that. The third race of the Fujitsu 200 down to the finish line for the versatile buildings BA, Adam Brook from Christchurch will win race three at Pukekohe in the NZ Truth V8s. The Aussie Cameron McLean of the Texan sidecar comes home second. Look at that battle for third. Oh, Perkins just holds on on the GT Radial Ford Falcon from that flying defending champ, Johnny McIntyre. But what a moment for this guy, proving he is very versatile in the wet. Adam Brook gets the win in race three. There's the wave of success in the big wet. Let's go down to Roger Davis. I'm with a very happy uh, Jeff Brook down here, who's Adam's father. Jeff, you won your first race in V8s. Well done. Ah, yeah, it's a marvellous feeling. And Adam's just come on the radio. It's just run out of fuel. <laughs> so, so he just got across the line? Yeah, he did. And it's just, we were having some fuel pump problems. So where it's pumps died or whatever, but it got us home. I bet he's celebrating anyway. That won't bother him, will it? Not now. No, it's wonderful. Yeah. Good on you, Jeff. Yeah, thanks very much. Unbelievable. There it is. So confirming that result, Brook just gets home for the win from McLean. Perkins hold on from third, from the flying McIntyre. Then the rest of the big boys, Fogg, Booth, Manuel and Scott, round out the top eight. Cam Hardy comes in a good ninth. Yildon, tenth. Fawcett, Richards, Edgell, Proctor, Bell and Hayden McKenzie.